it seems to be absolutely clear what the definition is. There's no real examination and, and sort of unpicking of the, the term in, in the literature that I can find, any, any robust um, you know, real examination of it. And yet when it's written about in the literature or it's written about in, in you know, pieces about Essex or Essex girls, it's as if everybody knows that that's, it, that's what the Essex girl is. So it, it, it is so pervasive that you don't even have to explain the term. originally started because Simon Heffer, who was a journalist, I believe, on the Telegraph or the Times, um, labelled Essex Man. The counterpart of Essex Man then, of course, became Essex Woman. His counterpart was going to be a rather loud, brassy female with very little brains. Quite the opposite to what we are, really. In 2016, a campaign was launched to remove the Essex Girl term from the Oxford and Collins Dictionary. Essex Girls Juliet Thomas and Natasha Salkins set out to redefine what is meant by the term Essex Girl. They did this by sharing their I am an Essex Girl hashtag, celebrating incredible Essex women, as well as encouraging people to sign the petition to revise the stereotypical definition in the dictionaries. I was asked to actually do a, an interview with the BBC, mainly because my area of interest being gender issues. The BBC wanted to talk about the Essex girl you know, stereotype and how it was impacting women in, in work and where it came from. It got me thinking about my own experiences as, as being from Essex. I spent some time in Australia and one of my lecturers when I was at university found out that I was from Essex. The minute he found out, he sort of looked at me sort of in a snidey way and sort of went, oh, so you're an Essex girl with this really sort of lecherous look. And it made me feel like all of the achievements I had led up until that point had sort of been stripped away and all that was left was this stereotypical image. He clearly had a very specific idea about what the Essex girl was, and it wasn't particularly positive. There's a lot of people out there that see an Essex girl as the stereotypical Essex girl and that does frustrate me a little bit because I see myself as not the stereotype whatsoever. Like people think of fake tans, fake nails, wearing stilettos. I can't even walk in stilettos. Like I've never worn them in my life. So when people think of an Essex girl like that, it does frustrate me a little bit because I'm like, I'm not like that at all. I can never quite understand why white stilettos are thought to be rather common and vulgar. Everybody wore white stilettos to get married in when I was young. The Queen wore white stilettos, Princess Margaret wore white stilettos, actually with black tights, which I thought was dreadful. <laughs> Nobody thought that they were common then. So why they should have become particularly a term of insult, really, to Essex girls, I, I don't understand. How, how can this be? I'm, I'm, you know, on the other side of the world, about as far away as you can get from Essex as it's possible to get, and it was, the, the stereotype was following me around and it made me feel quite diminished. So I was sort of thinking this through before I talked to the BBC and thought, no, this is really a, an area that is ripe for examination because it's a serious thing. Whilst people sort of think that the stereotype is a bit jocular and a, a bit light-hearted, I think it has some serious undertones that we need to look at. A lot of them are denying they come from Essex, which I think is a great shame. Most of the young Essex girls that I've met are absolutely smashing. It would be so good for them to have pride in their county. People ask where you're from, and I'm always like, Brentwood in Essex, but I'm nothing like the Towie girls. Like, I always made sure I said that so that I didn't get judged. So I think it was like a precaution, like, don't judge me, I'm not like that kind of thing. Whenever I go on holiday to anywhere, and you get talking to people as you do, and people go, oh, where are you from? Sometimes you don't even want to say where you're from because they straight away go in with the, oh, you've not got your white stilettos on then. I think, no, <laughs> no, I haven't. And you don't want to get into that banter about it because it's not that funny after a while. Yeah, you could say, oh, it's only a joke, get over it. It actually isn't. If it's in the dictionary as being a really highly offensive definition that is spread across all women, I think it you know, sets people up to either accept that or it makes other people think that women from Essex are like that. 
And whilst clearly the evidence suggests that that's, that's not true, it's very difficult to actually push against stereotypes once they're embedded. The I'm an Essex Girl campaign reached nearly 10,000 signatures and was clearly something people were incredibly passionate about. It really got people finally acknowledging the issue. Despite all of this, however, the definitions still stand today. Both the Oxford and Collins dictionaries have been contacted for comment. That is horrendous. Wow. Hmm. That's not great, is it? <laughs> if you're talking about the, the definition which is now in the dictionary, I thought it was absolutely appalling. Yeah, I don't see myself in any of that apart from woman. Whose business is it if you are sexually promiscuous? <laughs> let alone where you come from. Young working class, well, that could be quite good for me, being, you know, being as young, because I'm not young. Where do these definitions come from? Like, how can you describe a whole society of women in two sentences? How did it actually get to the point where it wasn't challenged at all? All of those things actually have their own stereotype attached to it. None of it's positive. You trust the dictionary, so for the fact that they're saying Essex girls are like that and portraying them in a bad light, it's going to make people think that that's the truth. It's just really bad that they've got, you know, in both dictionaries, something out there that's completely wrong. It's actually made my heart race a little bit because I can't believe how badly that plays out. I think it really diminishes the the importance of language that once you actually start calling something by a certain name and it has a meaning attached to it and it becomes embedded in culture it's really very difficult to shift if this was in the dictionary about a black girl or about a white girl or about an asian girl i think everyone would be up in arms i cannot believe that something that is official can stamp a generalised term and a generalised definition over a massive population of people. There needs to be a, a way of actually calling that out. What is it telling our children? What is it telling young girls? And what is it telling young men about Essex women? Urban Dictionary is known for its slang, humorous and offensive definitions. Their definitions for an Essex girl are strikingly similar to the ones found in the Collins and Oxford Dictionaries.
people have come here from like Scotland and from other countries to come to Essex because they've seen Towie and they want to see it. I think it means the stereotype has become more real because people come here expecting to see that. Some people see it as a positive thing, um, it's highlighting our county. Personally, I don't see it as a good thing. I have experienced people gone to me, oh, Towie, you don't look like Towie. I can tell you now, he said, I was surprised you came from Essex because of the way you speak. If I wear lipstick, am I an Essex girl? If I don't wear any makeup, does that make me not an Essex girl? I was furious. Does it matter? You're actually having to choose. Do I choose to identify myself as an Essex girl, knowing that stereotype can be perceived as highly negative, or do I actually distance myself from the place that I come from? You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You definitely have to work twice as hard in trying to break down the barriers. Perceived as being you know, the typical Essex girl, therefore Essex girls don't get those sorts of jobs. You've kind of ticked all the boxes, but because you are from Essex, you're having to then answer to people's challenging minds. Typical Essex girl as well. I mean, a lot of the young people I know around here, they love their homes, they're nice young mums. I don't think that the younger generation are actually seeing things as black and white as, as perhaps we might have and previous generations might have. This documentary, for example, it's showing that Essex women are not just one thing. Essex girls shouldn't worry what anyone else thinks because if you have the blonde hair and you have your eyebrows done and you have your lips and teeth and lashes and nails and all of that stuff, you might also have a PhD. I was sort of co-starter of the Essex Women's Advisory Group with George Courtauld. What we wanted to do was say to Essex girls, be proud of where you come from, because we're proud of you. This Girl Can is definitely a really known vision for girls and women out there, and it's definitely empowering, it's promoting women, supporting each other, really making sure that people in Essex have something to work towards. So it could be healthy eating, it could be a mum that's just had a baby that wants to meet somebody. It's just all about female empowerment, and that's what I'm about. Whenever you do something, you can wear your t-shirt and it gets people talking. And even post on like social media, it's like, this girl can. It just kind of gets it out there and encourages women. These are a group of women, people of different ages, different abilities, different sizes. It's all of us as a collective showing that actually women can achieve whatever they want to. Also having another serious side, which was at the same time as doing this, raising money to support women's charities in Essex, which we've been able to do quite well. I always say I'm proud that I'm an Essex girl, always have done. I mean, my husband's family come from up north and up there, so I said, no, 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 I'm proud to be Essex. Always have been and always will be. An Essex girl can be anything. An Essex girl is a mother, an academic, they're you know, a student, they are wearing white heels or wearing, you know, black converse. I'm always going to say to myself, and yes, I'm an Essex girl, as in I'm from Essex. I couldn't be anyone but myself. To say, oh, it's just a joke, how are you going to change the dictionary, that's what an Essex girl is. No, you have to challenge it. You go, no, that is not. A coordinated effort is really important and a continued, loud, voice, which I'm really pleased to say that there's some really fabulous women and some groups out there actually doing a really good job of that. Appearance isn't what makes the person, it's the person that makes the person. So carry on being who you want to be. As you've done and as I've done, we've achieved much more than what that horrendous definition labels us to be.